Hello, everyone, and welcome to RC Plane Lab. I'm Ron. And I'm Tom. So, Tom, how are you? I'm good. What how are, are you? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> what are what we going to talk about? What are we gonna, <laughs> I beat you to it. Now, what are we going to talk about? Uh, how about propellers. balancing propellers? And balancing them. <laughs> wow. I thought we were going to get better at this the more we did it, but right? apparently not. Apparently not. Yeah, we're so lame. <laughs> so we're going to talk about balancing propellers. Yep. Uh, you did a wonderful video for us Aww. not too long ago for well, YouTube. Thank you. uh, the editing was beautiful the and perfect. The editing was really nice, <laughs> which you did, I, if I recall. That's why I said it was great. Yeah. Um, no, but anyway, so there's a, a video on YouTube that mm -hmm. kind of will go over how to do this. Yep. Uh, but we thought for our listeners that listen and don't view, because they're listeners and not viewers, uh, <laughs> we, sense. Would, we would kind of talk about the, the proper way to uh, balance your propeller yep. and the improper way to balance your propeller and why it's important to balance your propeller. And what can happen if you don't balance your propeller. Speaking of which, what can happen if you don't balance your propeller? Well, lots of things can happen, uh, may happen. Some things will happen if you don't balance your propeller. Um, but, uh, you know, balancing a propeller is not a, it's not really a terribly difficult task to perform, um, but it is necessary uh, for quite a few reasons. The first of which is uh, an imbalanced propeller causes vibration and vibration is bad for electronics. Why is that? Well, they just, I don't, you know, I'm not exactly sure, but they just don't like being shaken around. It's weird. Like, I don't like being shaken either. Do you? Well, it depends on who's doing the shaking, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, vibration and the oscillations and the harmonics that, uh, that can develop from an imbalanced propeller, it's really bad for electronics, um, especially um, the, the bigger you go, because uh, the bigger the propeller and the more imbalanced it can be, the, the larger the effect of that imbalance and the larger the vibration. And it causes all kinds of havoc with electronics, especially also, not, not especially also, but also with, especially. Uh, with electronics. If you have any metal to metal contact in your airplane, other than the engine, maybe like a, uh, a metal control horn with a, maybe a metal clevis pin in there, that vibration can set up um, RF noise, which, you know, our 2.4 gigahertz radios are not quite as susceptible to that, but anybody that's still using 72 megahertz could be, you know, prone to, to RF noise and things like that. So vibration could set that sort of thing up too. Yeah, and you don't want any kind of RF noise because what can happen? You can lose signal and crash your plane. Yeah, Nobody wants to crash good. their plane. No. Something else that uh, that can happen uh, can develop. Uh, it, it can prevent your engine from developing its uh, its maximum thrust. You know, trying to mm -hmm. turn a propeller that's out of balance. Um, it's kind of like having a wheel out of balance. You can feel that vibration, and uh, one that's in in balance will will actually be able to spin much faster than one out of balance because it's not trying to overcome that that asymmetric uh, that out of weird rotation dynamic. force. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you think about it, um, like let's like a wheel for example, an out of balance wheel. Um, every 180 degrees, that heavy part of the wheel is going to be trying to make contact with the, with the ground and be providing more resistance than the lighter weight side of the wheel. So that causes like an imbalance and you just can't spin it as fast as you could if it was perfectly balanced. Same thing for a propeller. Um, trying to spin an out of balance propeller is harder than trying to spin an, a properly balanced one. So you'll get more RPM and more thrust out of one that's balanced properly. And just, it's smoother. It just runs better and it sounds yes. better and you don't have to worry about tearing your plane apart. Yep. And something else that can happen, uh, an out of balance propeller propeller, hard to say, uh, can also uh, maybe set up a um, negative flight characteristic or maybe a flight characteristic that uh, is <laughs> – it was hard for me to say. Characteristic. I still can't say it. <laughs> Would you say it for me so I can continue? Characteristic. Thank you. Uh, that, what he said, um, <laughs> it can set that up. Uh, huh. If a if you replace, say, a balanced propeller with an imbalanced one, um, it can have an adverse effect on your trim uh, because of the different uh, P factor and gyroscopic forces that are involved because of the propeller being imbalanced. So, you know, just stick with a balanced propeller. And, and so that's a negative flight what? <laughs> a negative flight characteristic. Good job. Hey, thank you. Look at you go. Yeah, how about that? Hey, you know what else can happen? It can cause... Uh, all that vibration can cause uh, components 
to fail because of fatigue, especially metal components like your engine. Um, an imbalanced propeller can cause metal fatigue and failure of those components, which that's a bad thing. No, nobody <laughs> wants any kind of failures or, you know, breakages or anything like yeah. that. Um, the other thing it can do is kind of like shake your airplane apart. Yeah. I mean, like, and you can usually hear it. Oh, like yeah. Like when you're flying, it sounds terrible. It does. Uh, especially if it's really out of balance. And yeah, the whole plane will just jump around. Yeah. and Everything that can jiggle or wiggle or vibrate <laughs> or create noise, you'll hear it if your propeller is imbalanced. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a drum getting beaten a thousand times a yeah. minute when you're flying. You can hear the whole, I mean, yeah, it just sounds yeah. terrible. I mean, and if you think about it, um, like a, a nylon control hinge, let's say, um, they're designed to be flexed, you know, but if you if you accelerate that flex with vibration, then you're accelerating the wear of the hinge and, you know, you're going to wear out your hinge prematurely. And next thing you know, you got a control surface fluttering down to the ground minus an airplane. <laughs> and that's not fun. No. Minus an airplane. Okay, so the airplane's still flying. Just, well, that could be worse, I Briefly. guess. Briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with, depends. Well, it depends on the control surface, I yeah. guess. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know what else it can do? It can, uh, I, and and this really, really bugs me um, because like you said, I like pretty airplanes. I like for them to look nice and, and not have any flaws, you know, if possible. Um, a propeller that's not balanced will cause your cowl to vibrate. And what that does is it elongates the holes, which allows it to vibrate more, which then causes that black kind of a scarring on the on the cowl. And it just looks bad. You know? I didn't realize that was caused by an imbalanced propeller. Well, vibration is what, you know, elongates those holes, and vibration yeah. is usually caused by an out-of-balance propeller. And that makes sense, because that's the biggest thing that's spinning. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, it should be the only thing that's spinning, hopefully. Well, okay. Yeah, I guess you got a point. <laughs> a wheel, maybe. A wheel can spin when you're right. taking off. Yeah. It can um, cause um, excess fuel consumption, too. You know, it takes more energy to spin that propeller at the same um, RPM than it does a balanced propeller. So, you know, if uh, fuel consumption is an issue, uh, an imbalanced propeller will cause more fuel consumption. Well, not only that, but engine wear and tear, if you're talking electric motors and stuff, it's really going to oh, yeah. mess up your bearings. Right. Exactly. Um, and you're going to be replacing those a lot more often than you should be. Yeah. How about windings in the motors? Could it knock those um, loose, maybe? Not necessarily. I mean, if they're put in well, they shouldn't. The glue shouldn't break on it, I wouldn't think. But uh, now if you if you mess up your bearing and you don't catch it before, you it know, fails. like you'll, you'll start to hear yeah. it go before it goes. But if you don't catch it before it goes, yeah, your bearing could very easily come apart. And, yeah, that's going to wreck your motor completely. Yeah, not good. No. And, and, you know, something we haven't talked about is the propeller itself. Um, an out-of-balance propeller not only causes vibration to the airplane, but also to itself. And uh, you certainly don't want, you know, a failure, a propeller failure, especially, you know, at, at some of the higher RPMs that uh, we turn these things. Yeah, they get uh, going pretty quick. Yeah, you, you get a blade coming off at 10,000 RPM, and I would not want to be in the path of that blade. Mm -mm. That's going <laughs> to so. get flung far. Very far, <laughs> with much force, especially if you're close to it. So Flung far with force. Flung far with force. Yeah. Hey, we should coin that term. No, I can't say it too often. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, it'll cause the, it can, or boy, now I'm doing it. Now it's it you. It can cause the blade to come apart. Yeah. Um, stress fractures and all that kind of stuff exactly. from the, the bending that shouldn't be bending and all right. that will exactly. easily show up. Yep. Yeah. So lots of reasons to balance your propeller. Um and it's just something you should get in the habit of doing if you're going to stay in the hobby for a while, I think. Yeah. A good lesson to learn, a good a good skill to have. Yep. Um, so what do you need to balance a prop? Well, that's pretty straightforward. You need a prop. Oh, yeah. Without it, you can't balance it. I mean, it. without a prop, you can't balance a prop. <laughs> uh, you'll need a tool of some kind to balance it. Uh, and then you'll need some way to add weight or subtract weight uh, from one blade or the other to get it to get in balance. Uh, and uh, time and patience, really, is, uh, is really all you need. Just yeah. those four items. It does take a while to do this properly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it's not something you're going to rush through and, and get done in five or ten minutes. No, it's something you should you should uh, you should get a technique, develop a technique, and make sure you don't rush it because for the reasons we mentioned just a little bit ago, uh, lots of reasons to balance a prop. So if you're gonna, it's just like my dad used to always tell me if 
if it's a job worth doing, it's a job worth doing right the first time. So yeah, okay. don't rush it, you know, d- develop your technique and, um, uh, and get a, a prop that's properly balanced. And, and once you develop your technique, it becomes kind of muscle memory, you know, over time. Yeah. And the, the reason I say it takes a long time is because of the way we do it. Um, we don't put tape on it. That's one way that you can do. We, we don't tend yep. to do that. Now, that's something you can do if you have like a smaller electric. Sure. Um, if you're flying nitro or any kind of fuel that's, you know, possibly going to get fuel on it, tape's going to come right off. Yeah, it'll, it'll attack the adhesive and then your tape flies off and then you're back to having a prop not that's not balanced. balanced. propeller. Yeah. Um, there's a few other ways of doing it too. Like I, I've seen people that will like paint the tips in order mm-hmm. to make one tip heavier and one tip well, I guess not one tip lighter, but in order to make one tip heavier, you know, for the, the light one. Um, I've seen people, and I've, I've never done this, but I've well, seen Well, unless it. you're using that anti-gravity, you know, paint, then you could make one tip lighter. I, <laughs> wow. Comedy is not for you. Sorry. Um, Timing was off. I've seen people drill the hubs in order to, to lighten one side of it. Um, so that's your anti-gravity right there yeah. <laughs> by removing yes, something. Exactly. Um, but see, I really don't like that way. I don't either. I don't know what your thoughts are on it, but I, I don't like that way because you're removing material and making it weaker. Well, you're exactly. You're removing material from, uh, the part of the propeller that really needs to be the strongest. Yeah. Um, it's the hub. That's where you're actually going to clamp, you know, the propeller onto your uh, power system. So removing material there and, and making it lighter, there's just, there's better options, uh, in my opinion. And not only that though, you're, you know, yeah, you're going to be clamping that, but that's also where all that centripetal force is going to be pulling out. Pulling, yeah, trying to pull it apart. we right. know that as you spin something, it wants to go in a straight line, not around in a circle. Yep. Because of that, you don't have as much material in there to hold it in. And yeah, it can fling apart a lot easier that way too. Yep. Yep. So there's, there's, yeah, there's several techniques out there. Um, we'll go, we'll cover the ones we use. Um, what about sanding off the tip? Have you ever seen somebody do that? Yeah, I, I've seen that. And ashamed, <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit it. Like in my early years, that's Ooh. how I used to balance props. Um, really? It is. Um, and, and that was advice that I had received from someone that had, you know, was, was in the hobby at the time. Um, See, that just seemed like a bad idea. Like without even knowing what you're doing, that seems like a bad idea to me. Right. It's, yeah, it's not, it, I don't, obviously I don't do it that way anymore. Uh, and I don't, I've, I've not seen that for many, many years, but I mean, if you think about it, you're shortening the prop on one side and leaving the prop, the regular or the stock length on the other. So I mean, that should just tell you you're going to develop more thrust on one blade than the other, which is going to create a dynamic imbalance, yeah. uh, which is going to yield the same side effect, which is vibration, which is what we don't want. Yeah. So if you're trying to get rid of that, so don't you don't the tips. Yeah. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to give it more reasons to not work right. Right. Um, I still like to, um, uh, if I could, I'll just start with that. Um, I still like the idea of painting the tips. Um, like a like a bright contrasting color like yellow or, or white um, because not only does that provide a nice um, visual indication of where the propeller arc ends like when the where engine the is tips running are. yeah, yeah. Um, it's also a handy way to add weight just to the tip the problem with it is um, maybe there's another alternative maybe somebody who's watching or, or listening could uh, chime in and let us know but i used to use aerogloss which was made by pactra and it was fuel proof hot uh, fuel proof i think it was a dope type product um, that i would just simply dunk the end of the of the propeller into the jar of paint pull it out let it cure and then uh, do that as necessary, you know, using the procedure we're getting ready to describe. But I can't find that paint anywhere anymore. I don't think it's made anymore. Oh, that makes it more difficult when you can't get what you so, like to use. But I'm sure there's other options out there. Um, epoxy, I think, uh, is probably another alternative. But um, the, the method I use now and the, what we're going to describe here is what I've been using for a while now. And it works pretty well. Yeah, and I picked it up or picked it up off of you. And I think it's it's the simplest, really, way to do it. Yeah. Um, now, I have seen, I want to get your thought on this one, too. Okay. I've seen people um, on propellers that to balance them, obviously, since that's what we're talking about, they will put uh, like Velcro 
on the hub mm. and then put a lot of uh, like thin CA in it in yeah. order to add some weight. What do you think of that one? Um, actually, I've seen that also. Uh, the, the propeller that's on my on my 50cc Yak is balanced that way. Uh, it was that way when I got it. Uh, I'm, really? That's a big propeller. I, I've seen it on smaller ones. I haven't seen it on huge ones yeah, like that. Yeah, um, I, You know, I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I don't like... Uh, I don't. I can't really put my finger on what I don't like about it, other than the fact that again we're we're kind of messing with the hub. I mean, yeah. I know we're adding material, but you know, thin CA stuck to us, or um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Velcro, Velcro saturated with CA probably not going to hurt the hub at all. But I don't know the the method that I that I use. I I like and even on a carbon fiber prop, which is what's on my on that yak. Um, it just looks bad. <laughs> you know, when, when I have the spinner well, off, you know, yeah. if I'm doing maintenance or whatever, and I see that on there, it's like this expensive carbon fiber propeller has this hunk of Velcro that's saturated with C. It just looks bad. It's now know. hardened. That's now, yeah, it's just, and I mean, it works, I guess, but to yeah. each their own. It's not right. something I would do yeah. to one. Yeah. Especially because I know how easy it is to use your way of doing it, which right. we will talk about here in just a little bit. Yeah. Yep. So, so those are some of the ways you can, you can balance, you, you can, those are some of the techniques you can use to add weight, uh, to the, to get your prop in balance. Um, or we'll, subtract weight by or drilling subtract it out, weight but by don't drilling. do that. Exactly. Um, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what we're going to describe is a uh, quick and fairly easy. Um, but again, time and patience are your friend, uh, when it comes to balancing a propeller. So what propellers can be balanced? Oh, you can balance all of them. Okay. With, the, with the correct tool or the or tool that works for you, uh, you can balance you can balance all propellers. What two blade, three blade, one blade? They're out there, believe it or not. Oh, I've seen one blade propellers, Aren't and that just it looking? messes with me. Those are wild. Yeah, looking. they're they're small, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's that's wow, weird. crazy RPM they turn too. Well, and that's why they have a single blade, so yeah. it doesn't get through the dirty air that the other blade produces. Exactly. Anyway, so what props should I balance? Well, all of them. Um, just like you can balance all of them, you should balance all of them because they can all develop vibration. And even at the smallest scale, that vibration is not good for your airframe for lots of those reasons that we mentioned. So, yeah, you should balance all of them and you can. So slow flyer props? I'd balance it. Fast fire props? <laughs> balance it. <laughs> Big props? Big props, little props. I was going to say small props. props next. I'm sorry. I stole your thunder. Two blades? Two blades, yes. Three blades. All of them. Four. All of them. Five. Yes. Six blades. Well, I don't know if there's any of those out there, but yeah. Well, it's act like there is. Okay, yes, all of them. 74 blade. So Now if, we're getting into turbines, so I guess. Yeah, if you're getting you into that? EDF rotors, you can balance those too. Really? Absolutely. Those yep. don't, I guess I never thought about that before. Yep. They can develop a vibration just like anything, anything that spins, you know, on an airplane uh, should probably be balanced. Maybe not the wheels and tires. Well, it depends how big your wheels and tires are. Or how fast you roll or them, I guess. how fast you have to go to take off. Yeah. True. So, so that might not be a bad idea, too. So, but you can use the same tools to balance those, believe it or not. Oh, really? Absolutely. Yep. I guess I never really thought about balancing. Like, I know when I did RC cars, I'd balance tires, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't use a propeller balancer. I just used a tire balancer. But I guess, really, right. it's the same thing it's when you think idea. about it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, when, by the way, do you balance your propellers? So, as a, as a habit, um, usually when I buy a propeller, as soon as I get it home, I balance it. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, that way, that way, I know when I grab a propeller out of my out of my stock or my inventory or whatever or my flight box, I know that it's already balanced. I can bolt it right onto the airplane, and and I'm good to go. So, as a matter of habit, usually when I pick up a new prop, I as soon as I get home, uh, I balance it. And if I don't have time, I'll leave it in the package to know that it's not balanced. You know, oh, that's a good idea. That, that way you know it's brand new and hasn't been opened, so exactly. you didn't do it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, but but as a as a general rule, I try to balance them as soon as I bring them into the house or the shop. So what so like what what can you use to balance a propeller? So there's yeah, there's several tools out there that you can use. Um they they range from something as simple as a, as a spindle with two pointed ends that you hold between your fingers. Uh, and that clamps the prop in the center, um, all the way. Which to, is which is kind of like the bigger ones that we use, just minus the uh, the bigger 
Minus part. the uprights. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a better word than the yeah. bigger part. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and they range, like I said, they range all the way from that to, you know, the cool, fancy magnetic balancers that uh, that you can get today. And every day, I guess, you can still get them. <laughs> well, I don't know. The one I have, you can't buy anymore. I know. It's another one of those tools where, you know, you just can't get them anymore. Well, you know, we'll talk about the differences later. But I, I actually don't mind that one not being able to be purchased because, like, after I saw you use yours, mm-hmm. I am a fan of your style as opposed to mine. Yeah. Now, I know mine has its its pluses, Um but for what we do, I pretty much think the the bigger one would work fine. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I can balance any propeller uh, with with the. Uh, well, I mean, I'll just sorry. Let's talk first. Okay. The, the different types between them. Yeah. So, so what we're talking about? Mine is magnetic, right? And the one Tom uses is it's on rollers. It's mm-hmm. got like big circular roller things on it. Um, there's friction in that though. Which is why excuse me I didn't I didn't hear you did you throw belch I did a little bit ah um, but there's friction in that yes and that is why when I was originally buying you know prop balancers a long time ago I thought the magnetic ones were far superior uh, because there is absolutely no uh, there's no friction yeah there's no perceivable friction with the uh, magnetic type the the magnetic ones really just sit in their own magnetic field mm-hmm. and there's nothing to stop them from rotating yep. um but yes there's a big but with that there one is a big if you if you only have small airplanes <laughs> yeah god Sorry. if you only have small airplanes you're fine yeah if you get into bigger airplanes, you can't use those to, to balance because the propellers are too heavy. Yeah, the magnetic field won't support the weight of uh, of those larger, heavier propellers. So, you, unfortunately, um, even though it is a, in my opinion, the magnetic ones are superior as far as precision um, goes. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, when you get up to a certain size, you just you just can't use them because the propellers are too heavy. They won't stay in that magnetic field. And that size is not that big. No, it's really I mean, not. And it, and it depends on the type of propeller, too, because obviously different propellers in the same size are going to be different weights based on what they're made of. Right, exactly. Um, wood ones are usually pretty light, so you can kind of get away with yeah. bigger propellers in, in wood ones. Yeah. Um, but the problem becomes when you get to plastic or FRP or, you know, whatever the, the carbon fiber ones, they get a little bit more weighty. They do. And you're not going to balance anything big on yeah, that. Yeah, the, like the master air screw, um, you know, probably... You're going to be getting the limits at about a 16 inch ish uh, on the master. That's going cause, to be tough. Cause yeah, because they're, yeah, they're they're just heavier. Um, you might get away with up to an 18 inch with a wooden prop. Um, well, that's maybe. getting that's tough too. But, I mean, but yeah. there is what we're getting at is there is a limit. Yeah, and uh, and honestly, there's really no limit um, with the roller type. Uh, not on the heavy end, no. Right now, they it's not as precise because like. You mentioned there is a little bit of friction involved with the rollers, um, but it's so it's so minimal that um, I think I've balanced well. I've balanced all of my electric props on it. it takes mm-hmm. it takes some you know time and getting used to it and going back and forth and back and forth with the process we're going to describe. But um, it can be done with with the in my case the Dubro uh, True Spin balancer, which is a roller type. Yeah, and I think mine is a top flight, if I remember right, top flight uh, magnetic something mm-hmm. or another. Yeah. But like I said, not made anymore. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about trying to find that one. <laughs> um, it. Sh- right. So yeah, you know they both have they both have their pros and cons. Yep. Um, if you want both and can afford both and can find a different version of the magnetic one, mm-hmm. cover all your bases. That's great. If you had to pick just one, yeah, I would pick yours. Yeah, I, and I would too because, well, obviously I have because that's the only <laughs> one I have. I don't own a magnetic one. Why do I need to? Because you've got one. Um, I just use yours. There you go. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to encourage people. I don't want to tell people that they have to have both because you can. You can balance any propeller on the one you know the roller type. Uh, so there's no need to buy both. However, I will say the magnetic one makes balancing those lightweight props so much quicker and easier. Just because that it's more precise. Yeah. It's, once again, no friction. So yep. that makes it so much better. Yep. Um, all right. So let's go over how to balance a propeller. Yeah, let's get into it. Tell me how. So choose the right tool. Um, if you have access to either type, um, if you're using a heavier propeller, use your roller one. If you're using a lighter propeller, use the magnetic one because it's more precise. 
Or once again, if you can only afford one or just want one and don't have the room for it, get the roller one. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. We've I'll, already said it. It'll do all of them. So yeah. start with the tool. And then um, and then after that, it's, it's not a really difficult process. It's just uh, developing your technique so that it's repeatable, so that you get a consistent... Uh, result with any prop that you put on there. And like I said, any prop, because like I said before, these will balance any propeller. So develop a technique that you can repeat. Um, start with, uh, me personally, I like to start with a level surface. It doesn't have to be level. Uh, side to side, not so much. Front to back, um, if you're using the roller type, uh, you don't want to try to balance a propeller on an in incline because your, your spindle will eventually try to roll back and touch your uprights, and then that messes with your balance. So oh, I see what you're saying. So level yeah. front to back, but side and to side. For, I mean, you have a little bit of play. It doesn't have to be, don't yeah. get your level out. Right. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly level. Right. Just usually, yeah, a, a countertop is yeah, or, plenty level right. enough usually. So yeah. um, start with a, a nice solid surface. Uh, you don't want to do it on carpet or anything like that. Um, but a nice solid surface um, will get you consistent results. Um, and I just want to make mention that it's okay if your technique is different from mine or Ron's or anyone else's, as long as you can repeat your technique and get a consistent balance across all of your propellers, that's fine. Right. Um, you can, you can take the technique we use and tweak that, or you can uh, develop your own and that's fine. It's okay that I'm not here to say that mine is the only way or Ron's is the only way or anything like that. Well, but in honesty though, like you've been doing this for like 48 years. <laughs> and so you know what you're doing now? It's and not 48 years. 48 years. Okay. You're right. It's like 52 <laughs> years. No, but seriously, like you, you've gone through and tried all the different kinds. Um, and this is what you kind of came up with uh, as your best way of doing it. And that's kind of why I have done it this way too. Okay. Um, you know, stand on the shoulder of giants. <laughs> oh, geez. Or old people. Wow. Giants. Are you saying I'm fat? No, I it said giants. Like I you didn't were say calling me. I was fat. not. That's. I don't know if I can do that because that's like the pot <laughs> calling the kettle black. Well, you're wearing I'm a fat. black shirt, so yeah, it's dark gray. I, I meant because I'm fat. But anyway, anyway, just take your advice and move on with it. <laughs> I mean, what matters in the end is is the the end result, because that's the end. That's what matters, the end. Um, <laughs> and that is a balanced propeller. That's what we're after here. So whatever technique you use, um, so long as your end result is a balanced propeller, that's really what it's about. So having said that, practice. Uh, practice makes perfect. Um, when you develop a technique, maybe you'll find something about your technique that uh, doesn't work for you adjust it and do it over and over so that it becomes, like I said earlier, kind of like a muscle memory. So you're balancing all of your propellers the same way and you're not introducing something new to the mix that causes you frustration. Because like I said, it takes time and patience to do this. So um, balance a prop, uh, balance it again, uh, balance it maybe after that again, um, just to sort of confirm your results and uh, develop that technique so you get the same thing, the same result every time. Um, like I said, it takes it takes patience, young grasshopper. <laughs> oh boy! Sorry. Yeah, it does take a while to do it and to do it right. Yeah, I will. I will admit that. Yeah. Um, and it's it not. Might, it might take some time to get it dialed in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? But it, it's not difficult though. No. And so don't be scared of it. No, absolutely not. Like there's no reason not to do this. There's and, no reason to have your buddy do it for you. Yeah, and it gives you it gives you a reason to be in your workshop tinkering with airplanes. And what could be better than that? Building. Building well, airplanes. Building, but I mean you're or, still in I mean, your workshop tinkering with airplanes. I, I yeah, I just I live for that. So um some props are ornery. So stick with it and uh, it, it will it will get in balance of eventually. Uh, true. So, and like, I've come to find that wooden propellers are more honorary, <laughs> or as, as you like to say. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Word of the week. Uh, they're they're more honorary though than than like a regular plastic propeller or carbon fiber. Yeah, three blade props can be a challenge too. Yeah, um, we didn't cover that in our YouTube video, but uh, the same technique applies. Um, so, yeah, some propellers are more ornery than others and uh, just stick with it and, and you'll 
you'll you'll get it. I mean, it, it's not it's not a difficult task at all. But it's not rocket you, science. Yeah, you get a technique. It's propeller and, science. It, it is. It's it's propeller science. Um, something else you might want to consider in your um, when when you start to work on your your balance, um, be mindful of air currents in your in your uh, prop balancing dojo. Um, yeah, I said dojo. Did you just watch like a movie or something <laughs> that was talking about? No, I just karate. I just went with the young grasshopper thing, and I figured, you know, why not continue the theme, right? Because comedy is not your strong suit. Oh, I'm kidding. You're well, funny. A prop balancing That's... dojo. I mean, you know, it's we're we're the zen of balancing here. So be mindful of air currents. Like in 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 our case, we have this vent right above our table, and that really did affect. Uh, when we went to balance propellers for the video episode, that it really did affect the, the, <laughs> yeah. the propellers, especially had, the bigger ones. I had to close the vent. Yeah. So that's something to be mindful of. You want to make sure you're balancing a propeller uh, in an area void of any kind of air current. So outside is usually not the most ideal place um, unless it's sheltered from any kind of wind or anything like that. Um, so, but yeah, a nice quiet spot where uh, you'll get a true indication on the on the balancer, so it's not affected by breezes or anything like that. So yeah, and depending on like what kind of air conditioner or heater you have, just make sure there's no currents. Yeah, exactly. I mean ours doesn't blow very hard, but right. it's still like I could barely feel it. Honestly, like I could barely feel it blowing on me, but it was enough to move the the propeller, yeah. and it has a lot to do with just how how sensitive these propellers are to yes. wind yeah. because there's not a lot of friction in these balancing things. Right. Especially the magnetic one. Holy smokes. Yeah, Could you imagine I know. what we would have run into it we've been <laughs> demonstrating with yours? It would have yeah. just been spinning and just taking spinning, off. spinning, 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 yeah. Yeah, never would you have got it finished. No, probably not. So once you've selected your tool that you're planning on using, in my case, the Dubro True Spin Prop Balancing Tool. You know what? Hold on. We, we haven't done this for a while. Let's go for... It's time for RC Plane Labs Tool of the Week. Tool of the Week. Tool of the Week. Let's make your tool the Tool of the Week. All right. It's the Dubro True Spin Prop Balancer. Nice. Available at Amazon. Dot com. Dot com. Um, <laughs> link in the description, right? Yeah, I, I can do that. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, that's the tool I use. Uh, it's super, super easy to use. Um, it's actually pretty versatile. You can balance, uh, like I said, lightweight to heavyweight propellers. Um, you can balance, um, propellers like completely on your table. You can use it to, depending on how you set the rollers, you can balance propellers hanging off the edge of your table. It's really, really versatile and it works really, really well. And it's repeatable. That's what I like about it. Yeah. And consistent. if you're getting into bigger propellers, three blade, four blade, you're going to have to have it hang off the end of the table. Yeah. Like really the one I have, if you're doing a four blade, you can't do much more than probably an 11 or 12 inch four blade. Right. Just because there's no room for the blades yeah, to it hang. Needs to, it needs to be able to spin so it can yeah. show you which blade is heavy or a combination of which blades in the case of three or more blades yeah. um, that are heavy. So, And yeah. I was really impressed with yours, honestly, because it was able to balance or check the balance on my big 33-inch propeller mm -hmm. without any issues. Yeah. So, so it yep. was nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, so once you've selected the tool, uh, the tool will usually have a spindle uh, that you have to uh, mount your prop to. Uh, in the case of mine, um, now... I want to comment that uh, mine <laughs> is old. I bought mine a long time ago. Um, and Dubro, <laughs> Dubro has changed it at some point in the future. And the spindle is a little bit different on the newer one. They changed um, it at some point in the future? Did I say future? <laughs> you did. I'm so sorry. I was confused. What I meant was they changed it at some point in the past. There we go. Um, uh, but it still works exactly the same way. So the spindle on the newer version that's not the version I have because I'm <laughs> old and I have the older version, um, it works exactly the same as the one that uh, we demonstrated in the video. Um, the only difference is mine has a, a threaded collet that goes together and the new one just uses uh, some springs, I think, with uh, fuel tubing to help clamp the propeller on the spindle, which I... Not a fan of. Yeah. I haven't used one, so I mean, it might work just fine. But uh, I like a nice solid clamp on the on the prop on the propeller's hub, um, which I get with my old tool. 
<laughs> no, I agree. I mean, sometimes newer is not better, but it'll still do the same job. Yeah, so it'll, 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 it'll work, work fine. Just exactly the way um, the way this one works and the way we describe it, it wouldn't wouldn't change the um, technique at all. No. So um, once you've got the propeller clamped onto your spindle, you just it's a simple matter then of just uh, setting the spindle. Uh, I like to mount uh, mine so that the uprights are parallel with each other at the same plane so they're at the same height mm -hmm. um, if I can get away with it um, and I just set the spindle right on top of the rollers and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it from here <laughs> on out it's uh, it's it's really where the patience comes in yeah <laughs> um, so once it's on the rollers I, I like to set the propeller so that it's uh, horizontal both blades are in the case of a two blade uh, both blades are horizontal and then I just simply let it go, and the heavy blade will usually fall. Well, actually, the heavy blade <laughs> will fall. <laughs> it ought to always fall. Yeah, it should never rise. If not, it's not but, a heavy blade. Right, exactly. Um, so, yeah, the heavy blade will fall, and that's your, uh, that's your indication uh, that you'll get from the tool. And, uh, and once it does that, um, then it's just a simple matter of grabbing that heavy blade. Uh, the technique I use is I grab the heavy blade with my hand. That way I'm not tempted to paint the heavy blade because my hand is on it. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'll grab the heavy blade with my hand and uh, take it outside. I'm going to say I take it outside because I'm shooting paint on it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, huh? You did it in my basement. I did. And at home, I do it in my workshop and... That is not ideal. I should use it in a well-ventilated area and blah, 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 all the safety stuff. Don't inhale paint fumes, all that kind of stuff. Got it. But I grab the heavy blade with my hand, and then I give that lightweight blade a shot of... The stuff I use is made by Minwax. It's a, a clear polyurethane in a spray can. Yeah, you say paint. It's really not paint. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, a clear, varnish. Clear, yeah, well, it's a polyurethane. It's a polyurethane um, varnish. varnish. Is, that, is that the same? I, like, I, I guess I don't know the difference. I think it is because it's a clear wood finish, and I think that's considered varnish. But either way, um, that's what I use, and it's available in a few different... Uh, um, finishes like there's matte and glossy, and I think they even do a satin. Um, I think I'm using glossy right now because I think that's the can that I just happen to have at home. <laughs> um, but I'll usually spray the back side of the blade um, because that's the less, the least visible part when it's mounted to the airplane compared to the front of the blade. Yeah. Um, just in case there's a different sheen, you know, than the than what the propeller is made of. Um, but I'll give that uh, lightweight, the backside of that lightweight blade a shot of the uh, clear polyurethane, and then I'll let that cure. And it's important to let it cure um, because... This is where the patience comes in, by the way. You can't just you can't just spray it and check it again. <laughs> right, right. If you if you here's what happens. So let's say we've got one that's pretty far out of balance, like the wooden one that we demonstrated on the on the on the video. Um, you shoot a heavy coat of paint on there because you think, oh, this thing's really out of balance. It's going to need a lot of weight on the lightweight blade. So you shoot a really heavy coat on there and then you go to check it right away and it's balanced, let's say. And then you go and you check it, say, an hour later, there's a good chance that it's not going to be balanced because what happens is the... Um, the propellants and the things they use in these paints, they boil off as the paint cures and then you don't have as much weight as when you started. Do they boil off or just evaporate? Well, ev evaporate. I think okay. I think the whatever the term is, um, but yeah, the the propellants and the VOCs that are in that uh, paint will evaporate uh, and take weight away from the blade. So it's important to let that stuff fully cure. And when I say fully cure, I mean so that it's not tacky or sticky anymore. And you want to do several light coats because Ideally, yeah. if you have ever like tried to do it on wood or anything like that, and you do a lot of or like a, a single heavy coat, first off, you're going to get runs. Yes. Secondly, runs are bad. Runs are bad. Secondly, <laughs> no one wants the runs. <laughs> oh God. Secondly, well. Um. Secondly, we good. Secondly. Okay. Anyway, secondly. I don't remember what my secondly was now. <laughs> I knew if I <laughs> kept interrupting you, you'd forget. Secondly, I think, maybe. Runs. You were talking um, about runs. 
it, when it dries, it doesn't dry nice and, and smooth. Yeah. Uh, usually you'll have like air bubbles and stuff that can kind of get caught up in there. And it just, it works a lot better if you do a lot of smaller, even coats as opposed yeah. to one thick one. And this is the back of your propeller. So right. this is what's actually going to be, you know, this is your wing. So you want it to be exactly. as smooth as possible yeah. so you don't create too many air currents. Yeah, you want the finish to at least be Bad as air good currents, as by the, the way. Yeah, exactly. Any turbulent air right. currents. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you want the finish to at least be as good as the finish of the propeller because, you know, the other blade should match the blade you're painting. So lighter coats are better uh, with plenty of time to, to dry in between. Um, at this point, it's just a, a matter of rinse and repeat until when you set that blade on the on the rollers with the spindle, that when you let go of it from horizontal, it doesn't move. That's that's what that's what you're after. Normally, though, like with the the newer polyurethanes and stuff, they dry pretty quick. They do. And if you're doing a light coat, honestly, five to ten minutes between a coat is plenty of time in order to do another light coat. Yeah. Like you're not Usually, going yeah. for an actual finish, like a wood finish on it. Right. Um, you want it, like I said before, you want it to be nice and smooth, but it's it doesn't right. have to be perfectly pretty. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, the prettier five or the ten, better. Well, true, but five <laughs> or ten minutes between each coat. Because honestly, if you waited for it for, or to fully cure over the night and that kind of stuff, you're going right. to be doing it for two weeks. Days. Yeah. Depending on the blade. Yeah. I mean, a yeah. lot of times a single spray, double spray isn't enough to do it. Right. Um, you're going to be going back. Like on that, the wooden one you yeah, did was for the video. Yeah, that was about half a can I think we put on that one blade. <laughs> it wasn't it was, quite that much. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I think it was a good ten times back yeah. and forth trying to get it done. So, yep. and that's just, that's wood. I mean, that happens with it. Um, so be patient. Yep. And something else I do, this is part of my technique. Um, once I, once I get that propeller to where, when I let it go from horizontal, it stays there. I'll go ahead and pull it off the roll, uh, rollers, rotate it 180 degrees in the case of a two blade prop. And I'll set it back on the rollers and check it that way too. You'd be surprised at how many times, actually, maybe you wouldn't be surprised. Cause I think you can actually see it in our video. Um, that when you flip it 180 degrees, sometimes you may not get the same indication. So you may have to go back and forth until you're happy that the prop doesn't move when you let go of it. Because as we mentioned, there is a little bit of resistance in the rollers and that can affect sometimes um, whether you get a good indication of the heavy blade or not. So um, I always take it off and check it uh, 180 degrees and uh, that's usually good enough for me. And that's what we strive for. Good, good enough. enough. For me. Yep. Everybody else is good enough is different for them. But yeah, good enough. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it takes patience. Um, but uh, if you develop your technique, you'll you'll get it done in, in no time at all. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the balancer that I have out um, has the wooden propeller on it that we balanced <laughs> it on Tom's. Um, and it showed it was balanced on Tom's. On mine it did. And you can clearly see here that it is slightly, uh, one weight is slightly lower than the other, about yeah. a 40-ish degree angle, I guess. Yeah, so, so it could it could use another uh, another, shot. another couple sprays yeah, to so. get it just perfect. So And, and once again, yeah. that's, that's going back to the whole, there's no, like no friction. Right. As opposed to the one that you have. Yep. Now, so the process that we described is for two-blade props. Um, Three-blade or more, uh, the process is slightly different. Um, I have, you know, a few years of experience doing those as well. And the, only, the only real difference is instead of, obviously, you're not going to have two blades that are horizontal. Um, so what I look for is no movement. So when I set the, in the case of a, of a three blade, let's say, I set it on my spindle and I set it over the edge of the table so that it can rotate, you know, 360 degrees if it needs to. Um, I, what I'm looking for is when I let go of the prop, I'm looking for no movement. Or I give the prop a slight spin and I'm looking for it to stop in a different location every time. That's what you're looking for with a, with a multi or a three or more blade prop. Um, and sometimes it takes a combination. Sometimes you'll get, uh, you know, maybe um, it's great if one blade falls every time and it's straight down, then you know you need to do equal parts on the two light blades. But it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you <laughs> have to put a little ever bit. works that way. <laughs> right. Sometimes you have to put a little bit more weight on one blade than the other. Um, it's okay. Again, take your time and patience. You'll, you'll get there. Yeah. So. Very true. Yeah. If I've learned anything from this, it's to be patient and don't rush it. Exactly. 
Yeah. This is this is one of those things in in airplanes, RC airplane stuff. You can't rush. Yeah, and and you shouldn't rush it because um, vibration is is a very bad thing, and we don't we don't want our airplanes shaking apart in the air. That's, smoother is better. It Although, looks cool if it's somebody else's airplane. Yeah, it looks maybe. awesome, but not but for ours. Now we want cool it to be smooth as per or smooth as perfect. Yeah. So that's smooth the is, that's the smoother. process I use on my roller type um, prop balancer. Um, I've never used a magnetic one except for just uh, watching Ron set his up here. So you want to describe the technique you use? Yeah, pretty much. It's just the it's the same as yours. You <laughs> you mount it on the spindle, put it on there, and and do it the same way. Um, it's just held on differently with magnets as opposed right. to your rollers. But the process is the same no matter which balancer you use. Uh, develop a technique and uh, make get yourself a process that's repeatable. And I should also uh, mention that uh, you should. Not only should you balance a propeller when it's new, you should also check the balance of your propeller periodically would not be a bad idea because, you know, let's face it, flying from a grass field, I run my propellers through <laughs> grass quite often. Mm -hmm. um, and that grass, it can build up on the propeller and, and change the balance. Um, so that would be a good idea to check it periodically. And also, um, if you've had a prop strike of any kind, um, you should you should at least check the balance, if not maybe just replace a propeller, especially if it's a wooden one and it's struck the ground. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even risk uh, flying with that. I'd go ahead and, and swap it out with a new one. I agree because um, small fractures in that will become very big, very quick. Yeah. And you can't, you can't see them all either. No. Um, and, and that goes for plastic props too. Plastic, you know, the APC and the master air screw props and, and other uh, brands of plastic props are, are a little, well, they're okay. They're quite a bit more durable than the wooden ones. Um, so, if you have any significant uh, prop strike, let's let's just go ahead and replace them. True, but it's not a bad idea to check the balance periodically, though. Do you balance your spinner? You know, that's a good question. Um, that's I've why never, I asked it. By the I've way, I've never <laughs> I've never balanced a spinner, and I'm I think I may start, um, especially spinners that you have to modify. Like you know, you have to make the the blade holes maybe a little bit bigger to yeah. to clear your prop. Um, it really. You know, I've got no good reason why I haven't, but I, I'm going to start. Uh, and it's super easy to do. It's the same idea. You just figure out a way to mount your spinner onto your spindle and set it on your rollers. I'm pretty sure most spinners come with uh, the bushings that you put in the hole to accommodate different uh, shaft sizes. Um, so put the smallest one in there. Hopefully that'll fit your uh, spindle and uh, set it on the rollers and, and balance it. I would imagine you could probably balance it the same way by uh, by the paint method, uh, maybe on the inside of the spinner, or maybe small, um, really small. I think they make lead tape that is uh, that is self adhesive that you can that you can oh, use to. That would have the, to be tiny. Yeah, on the inside of the spinner. Well, we used it way back in the RC car days. We had we had it for the wheels that we could balance. So. Um, something like that, but anything you could use or uh, glue to the, or maybe you could just use epoxy, mix up a little bit of epoxy at a time and dab it on there. And nice yeah. thing about epoxy is, that, you know, the weight's not going to change as you wait for it to cure. So, you know, that might be, that might be what I actually use. <laughs> there you go. Let there us know go. how it goes when you do it. I will. Maybe I'll make a video. There you go. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, that's it. Uh, get in the habit of balancing your props as soon as you get them home. That way, um, <laughs> That way you uh, have a balanced propeller when you, when you need it. Awesome. Well, until next time, I'm Ron. I'm Tom. Good night. Good night.